Ladies and gents, welcome to the show. This is PT Pinecast. I'll be your host. I'm a physical therapist, Jimmy McKay. Uh, before we get started, I do want to say thanks to our friends from CBDRX for you, your CBD store. Just had a great conversation with the team over there today. Really cool things coming in the world of CBD and research. Uh, the question they ask all the time, do you know exactly what this over-the-counter CBD stuff is going to do with your patients in their course of treatment? Well, you should because people are taking it for sleep, wellness, health. They're taking it because their friends are taking it. So you should know the ABCs of CBD. Get that at CBDRX4U.com. Great episode today. Excited to bring back a, 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 a friend of a show, frequent uh, participant in, in sharing good information with you in the PT world, uh, Jamie Schreier. So excited there. Uh, before we get started, I do want to let you guys know two, like, I, mean, I want to call them housekeeping things. These are things that are awesome for you. One is a contest, and we're going to put the link in the show notes, or excuse me, in the comments below. Uh, one of our supporters, one of our sponsors, Fusion Medical Staffing, leader in travel physical therapy, a contest now could land you what they call a swag bag. That's a bag full of free stuff. In that bag will also be a $50 gift card to Amazon. Bezos needs to get back to space, people. He doesn't get to space for free. Right. So we got to make sure we support Amazon. So uh, Fusion's going to give you a shot at a $50 gift card uh, at Amazon. All you got to do is throw some information in there. You're going to learn about opportunities in travel physical therapy. The link for that, if you're watching live or on replay, is below. I do it quickly. They are going to pull the winner for that before the end of August. So you got a couple of days to do that. But why not do it now? If you're listening to the replay of this, check the show notes as well to get that link. The second thing I want to talk about, if you're watching a live stream, we're going to throw a picture on screen. Uh, the gentleman on the screen here now is uh, Chuck Aoki. Chuck, the captain of the United States wheelchair rugby team. Chuck currently in Tokyo. Here he is on screen holding a, a copy of Sports Illustrated on which he is featured as the cover one of the athletes. He was actually the flag bearer as well for the delegation of U.S. athletes in Tokyo. Uh, we had a chance to talk with Chuck back in 2019, came on the show. I'm an admitted Olympics and Paralympics geek. I fall in love with all the little vignettes and the stories. I'm all in. I love watching. I love watching sports. I have no idea about anything about handball, fencing. Yeah, I'll spend two hours on that. Let's do that. Uh, I do want to walk through a timeline with you, though. Chuck Aoki, accomplished athlete. Never on the cover of Sports Illustrated. 2019 comes on our show. 2021 on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to say that probably did. I don't know if it's correlation or causation, but I'm just going to leave that there. Uh, we wish him and his team uh, luck there. I just love looking at it. Look at that. He's just so geeky out the fact that he's on Sports Illustrated. That's awesome. So we are re-releasing the episode with Chuck tomorrow. We had the conversation back in 2019. I think everything's applicable back then. They were trying to qualify for the games that they are at now. So I think it's pretty cool that we had that opportunity. I'm going to try to get him. Can we get him back on the show afterwards? He's busy now, but after he gets back from Tokyo, I'll put in a call. Uh, so we're going to do that. So I wanted to get those things out of the way before we start the episode and bring in our guest. And I've done that. So let's do that. All right, the way we go. Welcome to PT Pinecast. Uh, well, just quite simply, great physical therapy conversations on tap. That's what we try to do here. I'm your host, Jimmy McKay. Find us on the socials at PT Pinecast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. We're at a lot of places. Website, also there at PT Pinecast, uh, ptpinecast.com, where you can also find our store. This thing's been up for like a month and putting up new T-shirts and whatnots every day. You can find something like this. I got a new can koozie with the Doctor of Physical Therapy logo on it. It keeps your cold cold. It keeps your hot hot. I don't understand how this thing works, but it does. So go there to support the show and get something for yourself or a colleague. Again, that website, ptpinecast.com. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the show. No matter what app you're uh, listening on, if you're the, on the podcast uh, thing, um, make sure you hit subscribe. The new iOS Apple update may have unfollowed you. There was a little bit of a glitch there. So make sure you click that so you don't miss a free informative episode. I just want to throw that out there. So excited to bring back a, a friend of the show. I mentioned 
in the intro, no stranger to the program. He's the founder of Practice Freedom U, author of the Practice Freedom Method, which is the practice owner's guide to work less, earn more. I like that math equation. Let's bring him into the uh, the studio right now. We've got Jamie Schreier coming back in. Jamie, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you, Jimmy. Glad to be back, man. Uh, for, Jimmy, I must say, I, I, I do a lot of podcasts, a lot of webinars. I'm, I'm telling you, the professionalism, you're, you're on point. Dude, you rock it out. No disrespect to anybody else out there, but dude, you are a professional among professionals, brother. Just wanted to let you know. I appreciate that. Thank you for that. I see you producing content um, on the daily, pretty much. And I'll use this as an opportunity to throw out your channel. So it's at Jamie Schreier. Put it on the screen as well. Twitter, Instagram. And you're already, you're always doing that. That wasn't all the, that wasn't always the way, right? This wasn't always the way we did things like, you know, I don't want to be a back in the day guy, but you've embraced the heck out of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have to you have to. Um, I mean, there's so much noise out there and that's kind of part of what we'll talk about with the idea of time management. But, dude, there's so much noise. It's like someone's yelling at you nonstop between all the social media apps, all the other TikTok stuff, yeah. all the emails, let alone if you have a staff, you got friends, you got neighbors. Everyone's is just yelling and it's just noise too much. It's too much. And what what I think about what you do, because I follow you, you know, on your channels, you pick an idea or a concept, something you want to get across, and you talk about it and you have a begin a clear beginning, middle, and end in 60 seconds. Which it's like, well, that's not hard. Jamie just talks about something for 60 seconds, but you fully explain a concept in 60 seconds, and that's actually the hard part. That's hard. That's a skill. That's that's a muscle you, you only grow by flexing. Exactly. I mean, if you want to create a two hour talk, that is a hundred times easier yeah. than to create a 17 minute TED talk. Yes. Because it's what not to put in and how to still make it relevant yeah. and how to yeah. get away from the extra stuff. Yep. Um, and, and it's interesting that that kind of leads into a big time management point. But I'll okay. hold that off until we're okay. ready to. Well, let's to do talk. the hard. What, what do we let's do the hard questions first? What are we drinking? I am drinking, I think the last time I was on, I was drinking some fizzy. I had to go find some fizzy or right. fizzy. It, it was ter terrible. It tastes like chalk. I'm going back to old favorite Coors Light. Silver Bullets. You know, the most watered down, non-beer tasting beer doesn't, you can find. I'm not a big heavy beer. I don't, I'm not a big huge beer drinker, but if I'm going to be on the show, got to participate. Sorry. Right, well, what about I've, you? Cheers to you. I'm doing the slightly mighty low-cal IPA, and this is from Dogfish Head. I've never had that. I was at the grocery store like 20 minutes ago, and I was—I do love Dogfish Head, but I'm like, hey, three? How many carbs? Just a cup, 3.6 carbs in an IPA. I'll try it. So cheers that sounds to great. And Dogfish Head is is real big where I am. Uh, well, the original Dogfish restaurants down in Delaware. So you've got the Gonzaga flag behind you, which means you're in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. Yep. That's where I went to PT school. That's where I was a clinician just after PT school. And yes, my, Good Beginnings Physical Therapy, pediatric clinic that I worked at, shout out to Good Beginnings, directly across the street, probably not a good idea, was a dogfish head uh, restaurant. Like they had a full on restaurant, as we say hi to Rita Pearson from APTA. Hey, Conference. Rita. Hi, Rita. Um, so that was, I don't know if that was good because I had, they knew my name over there. Like well, I was that, there that's enough, okay. Enough. You, you got to um, get to the day somehow. You got to get through a day. Yeah, Peds PT, though. Every once in a while, you need to have a dogfish at the end of the day. Before we get into time management, we were sort of like talking before, you know, pre pre going live. And I had mentioned today and yesterday, I don't want to jinx it, but I had like two of the best work days back to back that I've had in the last 18 months. And you were like, what? And you, of course, jumped into like great <laughs> mode, like, what about them made them like that? I was like, hang on. I want to tell everybody, but I want to do it when the cameras are on. So recently I moved, I moved over to Mount Sinai Hospital. Now I work for Mount Sinai Hospital. I'm the director of communications. It's an eight hospital system and hundreds of outpatient facilities across New York City. I am the director of communications of the Division of Rehabilitation and Human Performance. So think anything rehab, physiatrists, physical therapists, OTs, SLPs. And I work with two research labs, the Abilities Research Center, filled with physicians and PTs who do PT research, and the Charles Lazarus Children's Research uh, Abilities, Children's Ability Center, um, focused on pediatrics, obviously. 
the reason it was two great back-to-back days is I finally got my feet under me. I know where I am. I'm, I almost have like social proprioception, if that's a term. I know how I relate to everybody, how I can help them and where I fit. And we, we're just, we're, you know, we, we get to do amazing things, right? We help people every day as physical therapists. So I think those two reasons, I, I was busy enough to feel like I was accomplishing things being stretched like a little bit like, Ooh, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I, okay, I'm going to have to get a little bit out of my comfort zone, but also a bunch of things came my way where I was like, Oh, I know how to knock that out. I can check that box. And that's, it's, it's meaningful. So those two things challenged and accomplishable, but meaningful for two straight days. I don't want to jinx it, but we could have a hat trick tomorrow. Yeah. And and isn't that interesting, you know, um, uh, aside from, from time management, you know, isn't that the way it's supposed to be? You're supposed to be in the zone of what you love to do. But of course, anything you love to do, you can always learn more. Yes. So being stretched a little bit, stress isn't a bad thing. Stress yes. helps up grow into young adults, but it also too much of it will, right. you know, break a bone. So you have that part of it. And then what was the other part? You you love what you're doing. You uh, love what I was doing. And then there was a little bit like something some things challenged me where they're like hey we're gonna do an adaptive video game contest internationally and i was like okay i'll figure it out and then the other half was like hey we need you to interview so and so for a three minute clip and i was like oh i can do that with my eyes closed but i see the value in it right so the other thing you said and it's meaningful and it was meaningful i mean what a great way for everyone to live to do something that you love to do that's in line with who you are and it's meaningful and it stretches you that's what this is all about. Whether you're a business owner, whether you're working somewhere else, it's 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 aligning and gearing up yeah. to operate in that light. Felt so good. great. I Felt mean, no good. wonder right. you had great days. Felt, and and you know what? Tomorrow's a lot. I want to jinx it again. I'm like a pitcher throwing a really great, perfect game. I want to talk about it, but I did talk about it. Don't uh, let the person get the blooper right at the end. Yes. No. Don't bloop. Don't don't bunt for a single at the end of no. the perfect game. Don't be that guy. But we'll talk. Go be that I'll, guy. Go be that guy. I'll clue the audience in. But anyway, first round brought to you by our friends from Owens Recovery Science, a single source for PTs looking for certification and personalized blood flow restriction rehabilitation training and the equipment to apply it properly in clinical practice. OwensRecoveryScience.com or their own podcast, which is Owens Recovery Science Podcast. Smart to name it that because it's easy to find. All right. So we bring you back in to talk about time management. Uh, but Jamie, I have a Google calendar. I've got a link that people can click a Calendly link. They can just schedule a time to talk with me. I'm a very efficient. I'm always connected. This thing's never more than a foot and a half away from me. I should be getting more and more efficient every day. I should be like working 45 minutes a day, accomplishing the same amount I did five years ago. And I should be done by now. How did I, how did I get so busy? <laughs> Because busyness is the badge of honor in our society. Don't you know that? Yeah. Henry David Thoreau said it best. He goes, busy, so too are the ants. What are you busy about? Yeah. That is the question. What are you actually busy about? You know, it's interesting, you know, speaking just from a, a, a practice owner, private practice owner, a point of view, you know, when you own a business, you own, you know, you own your podcast and stuff, you're getting pulled in a million directions, right? Everybody wants your time. Um, you're, you're probably always thinking about work. I mean, in your case, you, you love what you're doing. You're thinking about it. Um, you, you have endless amounts of to-dos. I love what you said about your, 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 your daytime job. And you're like, I felt accomplished. Yeah. Well, I know there's so many business owners out there that never feel accomplished. They never feel good. Even when they have a great session they are helping someone someone comes in and says oh my god jimmy you're the greatest i mean we're talking about a fleeting second and then it's right back into the mountains of the sticky notes that are all over the place or your phone just keeps dinging you have this to do this is due this is due and and that's how all of us feel and that's kind of how society sets us up to be because there's so many things out there to distract us there's so many things out there that just brings the noise. One of my, I used to, did I tell you I used to be old hip hop guy back in the day? Have we ever talked about that? We have not. 
Jamie, the old the old hip hop guy. Yes, I wore the black shirt, gold. I had the I had the mustard yellow pants, maybe a gold chain. That's that's you know we're not sure. There there has been rumors I had the gold chain. I could dance a little bit. So there is a great song by one of my favorite bands, uh, Public Enemy, that said, "Bring the noise." Bring the noise. And bring the noise is all the freaking noise that is constantly taking us out of what we are doing. And that's what business owners are are facing right now. But I want to kind of bring to you a different perspective. There's two types of lenses out there in the world. There's the lens of the time and effort economy. Some people refer to it as economy. And then there's the lens of the result. Most of us are in the time and effort economy. We believe time, effort, let's do it. More is better. Yep. If I work hard, then I will be successful. Then I will make it. And it doesn't mean working hard and doing those are, are, are bad things. It's actually necessary to be successful. But when you keep going, time is money, time and effort, time and effort, what you're really doing is that's kind of more of a security type of thing. When you, when you have a time and effort, a lot of times you're going to be an employee working for someone yep. that's more secure. But when you're a business owner, when you've crossed over that line, what you really have now is you have the opportunity to do whatever you want. You have the opportunity to make what you want. You have the opportunity to create what you want, to treat how you want, to treat who you want. And it the, the idea of this, Jimmy, is to get the results that you want by doing working in the least amount of time with the least amount of effort. That's the idea. Work smarter, not harder, right? I mean, you dip into- We you dip say into, that. But we don't do it, right? We, we do it for fleeting moments, right? There's almost that, like, there's that hit of dopamine that I just check something off. And then I'm almost immediately rushing into that is like, I should be doing more. I should so, be doing more. So, so, so that's an interesting thing, because people say to me, well, Jamie, what's the time management secrets? And, 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 I, always, and I often ask them, I go, do you want to carve out more hours in your day so you can actually fill it with more stuff? Or do you actually want to reduce the amount of stuff, the amount of messes, the amount of you know junk that is actually on your plate? And so many of us have a difficult time in actually letting go because as you said, you brought up the neurochemical dopamine that we do get these dopamine hits. We do, do get these periods of high when there's like, dramatic thing that's happening. I'm so overwhelmed. Oh my God, there's some crazy thing happening in my business. Uh, a so-and-so just gave the resignation letter. Like these are bad things, but to us, they give us a little boost of energy, albeit it's negative energy. Yeah. So I, I just want to share just a quick framework that kind of looks at your days in a different way. Now, granted, if you're working from someone, it's not going to work as much, but I think you'll get the idea. So there's three types of days. All right. There are free days. These days are just like it sounds. The purpose of these days is to re-energize and rejuvenate you. That's the purpose of the day. Is your, your tank doing day in and day out starts to come down and you need time to fill it back up. You don't fill it up by working more. You, you don't fill it up by, by having more meetings. You fill it up by doing non-work related things. All right, things you enjoy, hobbies, vacations. So that's the first day. And I can go into each of them specifically, but that's the first type of day. Okay. The second type of day is a revenue producing day. Um, this type of day is all about activities that produce revenue or that lead to produce revenue. An example of this would be in the treatment world that we're in is treating patients. Treating patients generates money. But also having meetings with potential referral sources, that can generate money. Um, having time to think of a new $100,000 program, that will generate money. So there's lots of different activities that help generate money, which of course is important because we need to focus on the things that actually generate revenue in our business because we have a business. Now, the third type of day, which is an interesting part, the third type of day is an admin day, administrative day. This type of day is really the design to clean up the messes, to help with the sticky notes, to help with the 
um, areas of your business that are process oriented, um, organizationally oriented, to delegate the things off of your plate to help uh, reduce the confusion maybe among your staff. You can also use this time for staff meetings. So these are the three types of days. And because this is kind of an entrepreneurial type of time system, um, I call it a practice owner time management system, but you have seven days in a week. Nobody says it has to be Monday through Friday. That came up way back when, 100 years ago in, in the industrial revolution world. But you have seven days a week. You can organize your time however you want. The most important day, can you guess, out of those three? I mean, I'm leaning towards that free day. Oh, you lean all the way in, Jimmy. All right. Why is the free day most important? Because who is most important in your company? Who is most important in your world? It's you. And when your tank gets low and you keep going and going and going, we all have heard the thing. When the emotion is high, intelligence is low. We've heard about the amygdala. When you get really fired up, your body's going to shut off to so many places because you got to either run or fight or whatever, whatever, whatever you're going to do. Well, the same thing happens when you start depleting your energy. When you start getting lower, you start becoming more agitated. You start becoming more reactive, not responsive, reactive. A little teeny issue becomes a big deal, and we've all seen it. Yep. Like you're fed up. If you have kids, you're fed up, and your son comes to you. My 17-year-old high school senior son comes to you with something. I'm going to go, would you, would you stop already? Like I just blow up. It's the smallest little thing in the world. But you know what? It's been, it, it was the last straw. Yeah. So when we're answering questions from staff, treating patients, treating patients that sometimes are difficult patients, uh, dealing with the cancellations, dealing with the insurance denials, and doing all of those things, let alone getting it from home because you're not home enough, you're not here, you didn't attend your, your son's event. I remember missing my son's first soccer game ever. Why? Because I was working and working and working. Um, it weighs on you. So having free days, having time that's just for you know either you or something you enjoy is mandatory. Jimmy, here's how the world sees it. The world sees it the opposite. Oh, yeah, waste. Here's what's happening in your world, and I guarantee this is how it works. You started your job, and you build up time. And when you have enough time, and when you go through all the proper channels of the paperwork, they'll grant you some time off. They will allow you to right. go away. So the regular world is operating on time off is something you deserve or, or you um, are privy to. Like, like I will grant you time off. In this world, as business owners, time off is a prerequisite. You have to take time off because you have to be on your game as much as possible. You don't get time off when you're already down in the dumps and you're exhausted or a lot of people take time off in our world where it's, wait a minute, you're not working, Jamie? Why? Oh, um, I had a heart I had a heart problem. Okay. You're at a heart problem. You're allowed a week off. Right. But God forbid for me to say, um, I, I need some time off to just get my energy back. My team got it. And this is just how I operate. That's not accepted out there in the world. It's not. Th this first day, um, this first day, this free day, this is practiced by major, major organizations, uh, I believe at Google, they call it 20% time where they say, okay, there's five days in a week, right? So one of your work days is 20% of your week and certain jobs at Google, they will say one day a week, 20% of your, of your time, you cannot work. People are like, what are you talking about? You have to be working on a project that you can somehow argue does something to stimulate you that might somehow come back to your to your job. And things like, it's also done at Amazon. Things yep. like Gmail, Google Calendar, and the Buy Now button were all invented in 20% times. So you cannot tell me that big, huge paradigm shifting things do not come out of just sitting around and thinking. It does. Yeah. No, and, and, you're, and you're absolutely right. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's the most important day. The next type of day is yes, this is about generating revenue, 
but generating revenue in your in your business is a lot more than treating patients sure right because you might be at the point like i was you know 12 years into my business you know what I, I wanted to teach others i wanted to mentor others i didn't want to treat 24 hours a day i wanted to treat maybe some vip people i wanted to build a business well when all you know is treating patients how do you let go and focus on other revenue producing activities like building up your network right reaching out to people that are out there come like you said having times just to think you can't just block off time okay in this hour right. i'm gonna I'll think be, i'm gonna be creative for the next 90 I'm, minutes I'm, right or or well you know what it can't be 90 minutes because the patient's coming 15 minutes early so it's going to be uh 75 minutes so by blocking out time that's not just patient related but also marketing related or any other revenue producing like thinking time like look you're just going to block out the half a day and you know what you're not going to do much my best ideas ever come when i'm taking a walk in my neighborhood yeah there's something about i know there's some research or something about first of all you don't have ceilings above you right it's open when you have open space you think bigger right the other thing is i'm moving Lots of research around exercise, okay. moving, getting the brain going. And there's no pressure. I'm just walking. I'm just feeling. I'm just letting ideas come in my mind and go out of my mind. And it's amazing how many ideas come and then just start to just keep showing themselves. And then, of course, when you come back, you can start fleshing some of those things out. You can't do it when you're just overwhelmed. You, 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 just, you just can't. So- yeah, a lot of the things that you just said are supported in this book, and I wanted to make sure, like, to chime in. So you're saying there's some research. There is, and this is something. Okay. This is like one of my top ten. This is like close. I mean, I just dipped off camera to grab this book. I love it for the, for the podcast listeners. Stephen Johnson, where good ideas come from the nat the natural history of uh, the natural history of innovation. It says everything Jamie just said, but it's got the citations. Yeah, which is good because Jamie needs that. <laughs> Jamie just comes up with this stuff. No, That's why I keep the book handy. Like like you, I read a lot of books. I don't know where everything comes from, but it all just starts to make sense that, look, the other way doesn't work. Right. But anyways, I digress. We're talking about revenue producing types of days, things that help you do that. And then the third day is really about those, those, admin, extra, those admin activities. So where are you supposed to have the time? Because people say, you got to work on the business, not in the business. Well, these these admin days are actually working on the business. Now, yes, coming up with those thinking time and all that. Right. But how about delegating? Like how many things are on our plate that we don't particularly like to do? Or this is even worse. We we're indifferent to it. We're like, yeah, I can kind of do it, but I don't have any energy, any passion to do it. And yet you continue to do it because you're buying into this idea like, well, I'm the owner, I'm supposed to do payroll, or I don't want to pay anybody, I can do this myself, and I'll save a couple dollars. Right. Like, that's the thinking that we all have. And the reality is, no, we need to do what you did the last couple of days, Jimmy, we need to put ourselves in the zone of where we shine. And we need to double down on that. And many times, it isn't in payroll. It isn't in insurance stuff. It isn't answering the phones. It isn't doing a lot of the technology. That's not where we belong. Yes, we initially belong in patient care, which is great, but a lot of us want to build a business. So I bet there's other talented people that could do patient care. So then what happens to you? We can talk all day long about this whole identity shift that happens when if I'm not a treating clinician, then who am I? Right. Yeah. And a lot of owners go through that um, when we start talking about time management and 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 blocking out their days to certain types of days and all of a sudden they're like well you're taking everything away that i thought i was right and i go I but you're the owner right this is actually building a business your role is huge your role supporting your staff your role building the network of uh people in your area your goal of thinking of hundred thousand two hundred fifty thousand dollar ideas see your homework is taking a stroll in your neighborhood correct See, that is your homework, but but Jimmy, that's not accepted out there. It's not. Like people, will, people will say, they'll say you're copping out or you're not you're not grinding. Hashtag grind. Where's your grind, bro? Right. Um, 
something you touched on there for a second was, um, and I call it Jimmy things. I got in trouble at a former job. I will not say where, but I was told like, you just like Jimmy, like it's, a, it was like an employee review, right? Like a, like a performance review. And they were like, we really need you to improve on like, um, paperwork and like procedures. And I was like, all right, like, what do you mean? And they were like, well, the people in like in reimbursements and like, you know, like accounts and stuff and all the world of money happens. I don't even know what you call that area, but they were like, you don't do it right. And, and you do it late. And I was like, I'll be honest, I'm overwhelmed when I have to do that because I don't really know what I'm doing. No one really showed me and I don't understand the concept. And they're like, well, you need to because you need to be well rounded. And I was like, OK, are those people learning how to communicate better? Because I have Jimmy things and I'm good at Jimmy things. I'd rather get better at Jimmy things than get better at those things. And I was well, looked at like I was ludicrous. Yeah. Well, we, we can, we can dive in all day to hiring the right people and putting the right people on the right seat of the bus right. all day long. Right. Because if I see someone like you, yeah, I'm going to try to make you do it. Cause it's more important that you follow the bureaucratic rules in here. Right. Not that it's going to get more results. Right? right. Remember the difference in the economies. They're about the time, the effort and the following the rules for the sake of following the rule. Right. What they're not about is, OK, if we put Jimmy over here, Jimmy can produce 10 times the results that no one else can do because it's his unique ability. It's his superpower. Yeah. So as business owners, we're trying to hone in on our superpower. And the way you do it is take time for yourself, focus on the activities that are the best for the company and activities that you can continue to improve on and start getting rid of, of the messes and the fires and the, and the crap that's on your plate. That's what it's out. It's not complicated to understand where it gets complicated, where it gets difficult is we are very highly intelligent, smart people. As so we have a tough time letting go because our motto is, and I had someone earlier this week say it, Jamie, I love your program. I want to be a part of it. But, you know, you're teaching me to actually let go of all this stuff. I don't like doing it. I want to let go of it, but I can't. I feel it's a cop out. A cop out. You know how selfish that is? You're letting go of treating to someone else who is thirsty for it, who wants it, but wants your guidance and your expertise for the last 10 years, who wants your mentorship, that when this person treats not only are they going to do it well and they're going to learn from you, you're also going to be able to see many, many more people. You're going to leverage your time and get better results by helping more people. Selfishly, you don't want to do that. You don't want to let go. That's the trap we're keeping ourselves. It's like we locked ourselves in. We have the key and we just threw it over our shoulder. That's psychological. This is this is this says. That, that phrase, whoever you're working with, and I'm going to guess, you were like, okay, we got to unpack that because you just they just told you a lot in that statement, which is tell me more about that. What You said you want something, but there is something blocking you. We need to talk about that. We need to address that. Jimmy, it's 80% of the conversations yeah. I have. Yeah. 80%. I talk to a ton of people, ton of business owners. Uh, a ton of business owners in a lot of different fields, but a lot of people in the physical therapy. It's uh, it's our own mental self-limiting beliefs that are keeping us where we are. You know, I, I make it. I make no claims of I'm on a mission to help every single practice owner who wants to be successful, truly successful, not just money, but have time, have the lifestyle, have the family, have the whole nine yards, the relationships, the team. Anyone can do it. The problem is we have to get over us, and that is tough. It's like the Michael Jackson song, right? My favorite song, Which Man one? in the Mirror. Man in the Mirror, uh, yeah. Man in the Mirror. You got to look at the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. I was, talking, to look. I was, talking, to, I was talking to a physician today who, who – how can I say this without – giving away too much it's not it's not a it's not a patient client relationship it's a it's a it's a it's a friend relationship but uh she was like i want to produce content and i said okay great you're super smart i would go to you if i had your area of expertise and need she goes i just don't think i can i said okay well, like do you, you don't know how which is why you're talking to me and she's like well, no i just don't feel like i've i've gotten to that level yet and i was like i need to understand what that means that's an insecure. Now we're, we're back in this. We're back in psychology. That's an insecurity. 
And when you walk her slowly through the process, are you smart enough? Well, yeah, I've done this, this, and this. Do you think that what you know could help the people you'd like to speak to? Absolutely, totally, 100%. Great. Are you waiting for information or permission? And she was like, I think I'm waiting for permission. I go, no one's going to give it to you. You have to give it to you. And, 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 and it's interesting you said that. That's a huge issue in our field, yes. our entire yes. industry. And that's why I believe, and this is just Jamie, Jamie on his own, uh, PT Pinecast is not uh, responsible for the <laughs> remarks that Jamie Schreier makes. This is just my thing. That's the problem we have as an in industry. We yeah. keep trying to take more courses, get more credentials after our name, because somehow the next certification, then I'll be good enough. You're already good enough. Yeah, that's the, you're that's already the good enough. That's you already trend. have more knowledge and more insight than 99% of the entire world. And to your point, you don't need permission. You need to take it and you need to own it. And I think if we do that, we can help more people. Because other than that, nobody cares. Nobody knows how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. And we care about people so much, but we hide behind this idea of, we're so smart. We know we know so much. And look at me. And and yet, like to to your point, it's like we stay paralyzed in this procrastination mode because of our intellect. It's our own intellect becomes our own bias. I'm sure you have a couple of books on our own negative biases that are yeah. that are preventing us there. But this kind of comes back to time management. Because when we talk about time management, I mean we can go through some specific strategies, which I'm happy to give. But yeah. it isn't about these technical little strategies. Because like I said in the beginning, you can learn five time management strategies. And you know what? You're going to be back here six months from now when I come back on with more time management strategies because you've implemented those. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. And what you did, you put more stuff in them. Yeah. So now you're just doing more stuff. I want to challenge each and every person watching this right now and listening later on is do less. Do less go deeper. Just like Jimmy, you did in the last couple of days, you did less, meaning your focus was less, but you went deeper. You sat there for eight hours. You got into this state, this flow state. Wow. You just kicked it out. And all of a sudden you, you got up and you're like, wait a minute, what did I eat? No, no, it's time to go. You feel good about it. You feel accomplished about it. You probably produce some amazing stuff. Yeah. That's what this is about. And as owners, the difference between the owners and people working for someone, people working for someone, someone else is creating your schedule. Owners, you're creating your own. So what construct are you going to use? What framework are you going to use? This framework by having, you know, one or two free days, by having a, a few of, of, of uh, revenue producing days, like, you know, either treating or marketing and, and maybe one or one or two uh, admin days to kind of start organizing and streamlining. When you start operating like that, your business will start to grow. But the reason it will, because you'll start to enlist help from other people. Leverage. That's why it will your business will start to grow. But if you don't want to let go or you, quote, can't let go, then you come up to what your, your person that you were talking about. Then you come up to this brick wall and saying, I want to do this, but I but I can't, but I'm afraid. And the real breakthrough comes when you take the leap of faith, just like you did to start your business, just like you did when you applied to PT school, just like you did with any major thing in your life. You took a leap of faith. It wasn't guaranteed because nothing ever is. Yeah. And you did it. And this is just a different way to look at something, but it's a way that works. It's worked for so many people. It's just not the norm. And let's face it. It's not. The average person out there isn't making it, and it's a shame. And not only are they not making it, it's affecting their staff because you're stressed out yelling at people and they're unhappy. It's affecting your family because there's no you know, work and life, uh, uh, work and home balance. It's just work 24-7. So your relationships at home, relationships with kids, it all gets affected because right. you're not happy. Correct. All you know how to do is just work and do more and more and more until your tank is empty, until you're like, you just got nothing left. You're just a carcass. In terms of tactics. So once someone is like, all right, free days, revenue producing days, admin days. Are these actually like, are the, it, 
are you doing one of these for a day? Because I could see someone be like, all right, well, the next uh, 28 minutes, I'll be uh, in free day. And so it needs to be a day. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you the ideal scenario, and then I'll give you Jamie's other scenario. Ideally, yes, you want it to be a full day. An entire day is devoted to you, you having fun. Right. So a free day, and I do free days, entire days. I don't pay attention. Anyone that does half day, free days, or a couple hour free days, or a free 28 minutes. Right. A free day is a day. Entire day. The other days you have to work towards that. So right now, most of the people that I that I meet, if they're still in their business and you're they're your typical solopreneur or overwhelmed operator, they have some staff, but they're still treating. They're basically treating almost every single day. Right. It doesn't mean they're very efficient in doing that. It doesn't mean their productivity and utilization levels are high. They just have a lot of hours available. So the first thing that I would do is I would use half days. I would say, can you take your schedule and chunk it down? All right. So the, the, the first uh, the, the thing that we talked about is chunking. Right. Can you chunk it down? Can you can you condense your treatment schedule less hours? but not necessarily less patients. Now, patients may need to move. Let's say you want to take Friday afternoon off, which is where I started. I said, you know what? I hate Friday afternoons. I don't do my best work. I'm just not in the game anymore. I'd love to stop at 12. I had about, I don't know, three, four hours scheduled. I had a handful of patients that came in. And you know what I did? I just went to the front desk. I said, as of this date, do not put any more people there. See if they come in another time. You know what they did, Jimmy? Came in another time. They came in another time. They, they came in another time. You know, did someone say, hey, you know what? I, I You know, I got to go anyways. I, I, I've been coming in for a long time. Yeah, a couple people did that. But they came in another time. But that mentally, having that block of time, oh, my God, I finished up my notes. I went home. It was 1 o'clock. Surprised my wife. Honey, I'm home. We walked around the neighborhood. I got a sense of what it could be like. And then I let go and had my two and a half day weekend. So that's where I would start. I would start with treating hours and I would see if you can condense it. If you're working 10 hour days, um, five days a week, try to work or, or eight hour days, five days a week, try to work 10 hour days, four days a week. Right. Or maybe four, eight hour days. Out of the, out of the so many people I've worked with doing this, their numbers never went down. Never. That's in terms of Especially this, especially if you're the owner that has other staff, like other therapists. Because chances are, if you're still working, treating, you're probably the busiest. That means your staff is not. That means they're open schedule. Now, here's where we dive into, like you said, like we have to unpack this, but nobody can treat like me. I don't carry all of this. I am, I am Atlas with the world on my back. Yeah. So those are other issues. And this is, again, comes to letting go a little bit. But even if you don't do any of that, even if you just reduce your schedule, you're going to you're going to get energy back. You're not going to lose anything. And you're going to get a taste of what it's like to work less and actually make the same, if not more. So that's the first thing. It's this idea of chunking. Okay. I would use the same thing in your admin time. Take a half a day. Add some admin time. Add time to deal with all of the fires and all of the messes that I know your practice has. They have those, right? You're dealing with staff issues. You're dealing with processes that aren't working. People are calling in and canceling. You're dealing with some of this stuff. Or maybe you, you've been meaning to put your, your, your gosh darn dashboard together and you haven't done it. Well, that would be a great time to focus right. uninterrupted. Remember, you cannot be interrupted. You have to tell your team. Bolt the door, put the sign on, or Close better yet, look. get the heck out of the office. Yeah, go go to uh, uh, Panera, go to Starbucks, go somewhere where you can focus on some of the stuff. Put your computer, plug in, and yes, take your phone, put it face down. Take your little Facebook and Twitter and all these apps and unplug them on your computer. Just focus. When you do that, I promise. I will promise to every single person, and I and I will stand here if you challenge me on it. You do this just for two weeks. Two weeks. And remember, we're not saying full days. Just carve out a half a day. Give yourself a half a day for admin. 
clean up some of these messes. Do that for a couple of weeks. You will absolutely see and feel a difference just by doing that one technique. People might say like, well, I need, I need time management. So teach me, how do I use Google calendar? They want like the tactics, but really it's the strategy that you're going to see well, bigger results. Well, no, the tactics are great. So we go through the concept, which I told you about the, 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 uh, time management system. Now we're doing some strategies. Let's get into tactics. So okay. I have a Google calendar. I love my Google, Google calendar and what I do in my Google calendar. I have three days on my Google calendar. You'll never guess what three days I have. I one is three days, revenue producing days, and one is an admin day. I, I, I made each one of them a different color. Different color, yeah. And what I do in advance, in advance for the next, well, I do 90 days, but in advance, I start blocking off first the green, the free days. I decide when I'm going to have a day off. Isn't that cool? Maximize it. Yeah, use it to your like, advantage. You realize... I'm not working Saturday or Sunday. I'm not working most of Friday. There's one little thing that got put in there. Okay, I'll let that slide, but most of Friday. So I have, quote, a three-day weekend. This isn't a just random thing. I have three-day weekends all the freaking time. I also have weeks off because I plan ahead and do it. Now, am I nervous doing it that way? Like, what What? what if something comes up? What if, what if I can't do that? What if... What if I take off vacation, but something happens? You know what? Yes, there's always going to be the what if game. But here's what I found that actually happens. When you block off the vacation, not the hope and pray vacation, the one you tell your you tell your spouse, honey, I hope we can take a vacation in the fall. No, honey, guess what? I blocked off August for, or October 1st to October 10th. We're on vacation. Figure out where we're going. When you actually put it on the line, you will intuitively – start working towards figuring out what it's going to take for you to be able to take off without a hitch. Yeah. If you don't do it, if you wait for permission, wait and see, wait and see, wait for permission for other people's calendars to somehow allow you to take off. You never take off. Now here's what happens. That, that work that you're doing, that's constant work, not all fun work built on the number of days you're doing it built on the amount of time you're not taking off that keeps adding in and adding in, eventually your gas tank runs empty. Yeah. That's when you blow up. That's when you say the wrong thing to the wrong person. That's when you make the look of death to your person, your staff person, and you get two weeks later, the random, hey, it's not you, it's me. I, you know what? I just, I'm just going to you know, get a, a, another job. Not, not, not near here. I just, I'm, I think I'm going to be moving somewhere else. Like, like you start getting every excuse, but they're out of there because you're not showing up as your best self. We call it being your true authentic self. The you that you could be, if you could just be you, you can't be you when you're just killing yourself day in and day out, trying to be everything to everybody. That's not your best self. What you did in the last two days that's your best self. Yeah. And I and what felt we it. have to do is continue to encourage that, not just for the owner, which is where we start, but for our employees. This is not just for you. It's for your employees, but it will never work until you embrace it and your employees seeing you doing it. This whole episode has been a really good highlight of really what we do as therapists too, right? You've got to get someone psychologically to say, I'm willing to buy in. I'm recognizing that I am a a large, this is, I need to take ownership of this process. I'm also reading Jocko Willenick's extreme ownership. And I'm, I'm hearing that word ownership a lot. It's like, I need to own this. If I don't own it, nobody owns it, which means it doesn't get done. Once you get past that, you need to stick to it and say, I'm now going to take, I'm now going to take these tactics. I'm going to put them into play. I will carve out this free day. I will carve out this admin day. I will carve out this revenue producing day. I will delegate, which for some reason is that letting go. Letting go has nothing to do with physical. This is all here and all here. It's identity based, as you alluded to earlier. You need to address it first and say, if I, if then, if this, then that, if I want this, then I need to do this, which is let go. If I want to work less or earn more, but work less, I need to do this need not want. Yeah. I, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's so true. I mean, everything, everything you said is, is spot on. And um, it's, 
what if you achieved everything you wanted to achieve? Like, what if you achieved practice freedom? One of the things that came to realization, because when when I went to just a really bad place, and I've shared this on previous episodes, I, w- I just went to a bad place in, in being a business owner and being a husband and a father and and just overwhelmed 24-7. Like, every night I woke up in a cold sweat, like 2, 3 in the morning. Like, I was in a bad place for a long time. Of course, people ask you how you're doing. I always smile. I'd say, great. And I, I tried to l- deliver the best care I could. But it was just not a good place. And then I just made the decision, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to learn. I'm going to try to be the best student and be open to ideas. And of course I wasn't because there were some hard grain things in my psyche and my wiring of um, that I didn't want to let go. Yeah. So it did take me nine years to learn this and to, in, and to, um, and to put it into play. But you know what? You got to have that thing that you really want. You got to have, what is it that you really want? You know, we talk about begin with the end in mind. What is that goal? What is that lifestyle you want? Because if you really want that, the next thing you have to ask is, are you willing to be open to learn, to embrace, to get it? Because, you know, you know me by now, Jimmy, I can talk tactics. I can talk that stuff. But there are tactical junkies out there. There are people that just say, give me the thing. Give me the, the shiny toy. Give me the, the secrets. Right. Give me the checklist. Give me the, the step one process of putting your thing. But you know what? They don't, even, they don't do that because they don't want to do the work that they really have to do that's facing them in the mirror. The man or the woman in the mirror. And that is, do you really want to have the lifestyle, the level of success, however you define it? Do you really want to have that? Because if you do, you're going to have to upgrade yourself. You know, I don't I don't like you say you have to change yourself. You don't have to change. You actually have to be more of who you already are. Right. More of the authentic, powerful person that you already are. But you have to be open to that. You have to be open to letting go, allowing your staff to make mistakes, supporting your staff, reducing the confusion and reducing some of that stuff that's not allowing them to do their best the same way this company is treating you. We get to do this. We get to hire the Jimmies of the world and we get to put them in a place to thrive. And when Jimmy wants to leave, we have a party saying, great job. We loved having you. And we bring the next person in. But that's not how it works. We get someone decent. We don't treat them great. The place is in confusion. They see us struggling. We're worrying about money every two minutes. They always know when payroll is due. And that person's like, this place is completely unstable. And they go somewhere else, and then we wonder why we can't what? keep good people. Right, right. Because we're just going all over the place. We got 50 million plates in the air. There is another way to do it. There is a better way to do it, and it's a proven way to do it. But we have to be willing to let go of some of this wiring that we have that isn't serving us and isn't helping us. And to the original point that I made with the two types of uh, uh, lenses out there in the world, that produces results because that's what should matter. We produce results for our clinic. We produce results for our patients. We produce results. We're not doing that. We're not producing the results. We're just living in this, I don't know, this, 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 this level of just getting beaten down and beaten down and beaten down. And we're healers. We can't heal others if we don't heal ourselves. Doing what we think should be done right a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy uh more information practice freedom you that's practice freedom the letter u.com for more information from jamie yep. uh you got time for three questions we'll do three questions let's do it man Less unknown, more transparency. We just had a, uh, an episode last week with our friends from uh, Fusion Medical Staffing. Find them online at fusionmedstaff.com, leaders in hashtag tra- uh, travel PT. Uh, Jamie, you've been on the show so many times. You've done three questions. I'm going to throw a curveball at you, but I know you can handle this one. We'll do the three C's, all right? Uh, heard a great paradigm that people love to engage in what they do, right? At work or I, mean, I don't want to call it work. I want to call it their thing because of the three C's and I've heard craft, like kind of how, like what it is you actually do, right? Like your, your craft cause what you do it for and community 
who you do it with or, you know, who, who you do it with, who's alongside you, who you serve. So let's throw those three as uh, as three C's for you. Uh, how would you define your craft? What's Jamie's craft? My, my natural craft or people call it unique ability, superpower, your special sauce is I love to learn things and experience things that to many people are complicated, um, convoluted. And I try to make just easy, simple sense of them. I try to make it where it gives you confidence and it inspires you to be like, I can do this. This is possible. This can be me. That's how I've always been. I've done it when I was in PT school. I was the person that was on the chalkboard. Yes, they still have chalkboards. <laughs> I, was on the, I was on the chalkboard diagramming the body, like anatomy, because I just understood it. And once I understood it, I tried to create it. I like doing anecdotes and stories. Now I do it for practice owners. So that's always been me. I love to do it. Um, and um, that's my craft. All right, your craft, you're a turmoil translator. I'm going to alliteration that. You're turmoil. You take turmoil, but you translate it so people can understand it. All right, so let's go yeah. to the second C on three questions. So we've got craft, cause. What is the thing that, like, drives you? Like, what gets you out of bed to do that 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 craft? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and my dad, like like most people's parents, my, my dad worked six days a week. He was a small business owner. He actually owned a health food store, but it wasn't called a health food store back then. It was called the Diet, diet Food. Uh, it was called the Slimmery. That was his uh, place. And what did he do? He worked 24-7. Yeah. He wasn't at my practices, rarely at my games. On Sunday, he was tired, but it, and he was an awesome father. I love, I love my dad. We had a great, great relationship, but I saw the struggle. I heard the fights that happened constantly about money constantly about you're not there. I saw how my mom made my dad feel bad. And I saw how my dad, you know, treated my mom. And I grew up with that. And when I started getting into business myself, the same exact thing was happening to me, Jimmy, the same exact thing. I wasn't there with my kids. I was having fights about money with my wife. And I said, that's enough. So what I do it for, I do it for the person that deep down, no one knows this, that is quiet in desperation, that is quietly struggling, but they want to. They right. want to have the good business. They want to have the successful business. Yes, they want to help other people and they want to impact the world. I'm doing it for those people. That's what the Practice Freedom Method is. That's what Practice Freedom You, and that's what wakes me up every time. And that's what puts me in this seat fired up because I know who I'm doing it for and I know why I'm doing it. I love that. All right, so now community. Um, that really is about people. I love to start and end with people, especially on three questions, but people. talk about the community, the people you get to do it with. So you, you just identified like that person, um, or what their driver is really now talk about that person. You know, community. I've always rooted for the, the little person, the underdog, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for that as probably many people are. So the underdog is the private practice owner. It's the person that's opening up a business or been in the solopreneur, making a couple hundred thousand or the person making a, a million and a half, but still struggling or it's someone making two million. It, it's it's that person. It, it's you know, I've worked with the big companies. I've worked with the, the biggest out there. And yes, it's the same kind of stuff. But that doesn't really drive me. If I really wanted to make more money, I'd work with them because they have bigger checkbooks and they'll write checks all day right. long. But I love the private practice owner, the person that has the grit, that's taking the risk, that I know what they're doing this for, that just need some guidance. So that's who I'm doing it for. But you know what else I'm doing it for, Jimmy? I'm also doing it for their staff because we also help with the uh, directors and managers and emerging leaders because I feel that the way to really build this business is not just for the practice owner but for the practice owner to know how to build and support their team. People. So those are the other uh, people that um, that uh, we do this for. And people would say, well, Jamie, you're not really helping patients, but when you help that owner, when you help the directors, when you help the managers, when those people are doing those things that they're best at, believe me, that's exactly who you're helping. Who would say we're not helping patients? Are you kidding me? We're helping those darn patients. <laughs> All right, that's three questions from our friends at Fusion Medical Staff and find them online at fusionmedstaff.com. Again, in the uh, the comments, we've got that uh, contest going on from them. 
$50 Amazon gift card. You got to help Bezos get to space. So get there. Uh, last thing we do on the show is the parting shot. All right, Party Shot brought to you by our friends from the Academy of Orthopedic Physical Therapy, orthopt.org, the leaders in orthopedic physical therapy. It's in their name. They just released an update. This was a couple of years in the making, along with all the research. Really, it's a roadmap, a direct guide to get you from wherever you are, doesn't matter where you are, to where you want to be. If leveling up, improving your orthopedic game is what you want to do, uh, current concepts of orthopedic physical therapy, volume number five, monograph five is out now. They've actually allowed you to do this. You can buy the whole thing or they've added some adaptability. Do you want just upper quarter? Do you want lower quarter or both again? So you can have the whole thing or you can divide by the body. So find it online again at orthopt.org. If you're thinking about pulling that trigger on the OCS exam, parting shot, Jamie, you're no stranger to it. Your chance for kind of a mic drop. The last thing you want to leave with the audience today, stage is yours. Oh, thank you so much, Jimmy. Well, uh, thank you for for having me on here and talking about this idea of time management, this construct of time management. Here's what it comes down to: you can have the type of business that you want to have. You can help more people, build your team. Uh, you can have a greater influence to your family. You could be a hero to them, a hero to your staff, and a hero to your community. You just have to learn how to do it. And you are smart enough and more than capable enough to do it. It's all about being your authentic, genuine self, the you that you could be if you could just be you. That's what we're about. That's what Practice Freedom You is about. And that's why we're on a mission to help every single private practice owner in the country, every single one to be as successful as they want for those that want that and to achieve what we like to call practice freedom. Website again, practice freedom, you, that letter you.com. Jamie, always appreciate your time. Thanks for coming here. And I always feel like it's a therapy session for myself. Hopefully the audience gets like, oh yeah, I can see myself in that. I'm doing that. Uh, hope to have you back on the show soon, my friend. Okay. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Appreciate you.